Hello, good people of YouTube. Mountbatten here. And today, well, before we go one step further, huge thank you to the Patreons over at the Patreon page for supporting the channel because that's the only reason I'm able to bring you this first impressions review of the Lepanto. So if you don't know, for this event, the only way to, to get the Lepanto is through the Stabloon bundles. And they did the same thing with the uh, U.S. Battleship split. But in the U.S. Battleship split, I got lucky and got the um, the Minnesota on like the I think like the tenth bundle. Yeah, on here I didn't get the Lepanto until the forty seventh out of the fiftieth. And these things cost fifteen hundred dubs a piece. And again, I'm not a CC, so I don't get any resources or anything from wargaming. I just get it through playing the game and through the revenue from the channel and Twitch and through donations through Patreon. So if you want to support the channel, best place to do that is Patreon. Link is in the description down below. And again, thank you guys so much for supporting me there because ironically with all the crap that I got through the uh through the um the bundles, I probably have enough Italian tokens or whatever to get most of the rest of the uh, Italian BBs to review as well. But I figure you guys would be most inter interested in the Lepanto as it is the tier 9 and is one step before the Christopher Colombo. And it, it does also have the uh, quad turrets as well. So, anyway, this is my G1 first impressions. I have not touched the ship in battle yet, as you can see here. I literally just got it. So, we're going to go ahead, go through her base stats, her armor, and all that jazz. And then I'll take it into battle and give you guys my first impressions of her. So let's go ahead and take a look at her armor. So these ships are supposed to be pretty well armored, and it does look like that. So she's got an icebreaker bow there, 60 millimeters. Uh, but the rest of her bow is, of course, 32 millimeters with this cheek plate right here that's 80 millimeters. A 70 millimeter upper belt, and then a 350 millimeter uh, armor belt. Stern is 32 as well, and does Dang, the ship barely fits in the port. Uh, this strip here does not wrap around. 200 millimeter strip there at the end. Then an 80 millimeter strip right there. Okay, that's an interesting design. Uh, 32 millimeter deck. 55 millimeter deck. All right, that's pretty nice. And then a 32 millimeter deck up here. Although this deck area is absolutely massive, so HE will go straight through that. A bit tougher time getting through the 55 millimeters there. All right, let's take a look at her citadel. So is it, it is turtle back and slope. So that is pretty dang nice. That should be very good at close range. Look how steeply sloped that Citadel is as well. So good God, you are going to have a fun time trying to pin that. Cause first off it's sloped like that, that's steeply sloped. And then you get this 350 millimeter belt on top of it. And even going forward, the front of it's 300, 200, and 300 millimeters as well, so I mean, I'm sure Yami could get through that given the correct angle and uh, velocity and all of that jazz. Alright, her turrets are really heavily armored. 46 millimeter face, 200 millimeter roof, 254 millimeter sides, alright? And of course, same for the rear. Alright, so pretty tough armor. I'm sure it's going to be chunky at long range, but Again, we'll see how she performs in battle. So she has 72,100 hit points and 47% torpedo damage reduction. That is very nice because on a lot of these brawlers, they tend to have really crappy torpedo protection like the uh, German battleships. But 47% torpedo damage reduction, that is friggin' nice for a ship that's meant to get in close. Alright, her guns. So she, of course, has 12 15-inch guns. With a 37 second reload time, good god. A 1 in 10 with 30 seconds, so again, fast turrets. Maximum dispersion of 228 meters, that's actually not that bad. Um, but her Sigma, I believe, is actually is, is pretty garbage. Um, the sap shells can pin 96 millimeters of armor, and they do 12,500 damage when they pin. AP shells only do 12,000 damage when they pin. Maximum range of 16.5 kilometers. Ah, haha. Ha. In today's meta, that's not going to be that great. All right, so initial AP velocity of 850 meters a second and initial sap velocity of 880 meters a second. All right, so some pretty quick shells. All right, so these secondary guns. These secondary guns are supposed to have short range, but they're supposed to be incredibly accurate. So these 90 millimeter guns, um, and they fire HE. That's interesting. 5% chance of starting fire on a target and a reload time of 4 seconds. And they can bend 15 millimeters of armor. So, again, that's not that great. 
uh, maximum range of seven kilometers. That's pretty short by the standards that we have now. And they're coming out at 860 meters a second. So the 152s can only pin 25 millimeters of armor. They, uh, they again have a seven kilometer max range, 7% chance of starting fire on a target, and an eight second reload time. Hmm. Mm. But they do come out at 950 meters a second, so that's pretty quick. But still, that's 25 millimeters of pin at tier 9. Like, the FTG has 26 of most of her guns, and people still say that that's trash and this only has 25. And then the most numerous secondaries, the 90 millimeters, they only have a 15 uh, millimeters of pin, which, huh, that's not going to be pinning too much there. So, uh, so secondaries, just, I would forget about them. A defense, um, she has some. Maneuverability, maximum speed of 29.5 knots, so not the fastest ship ever. That's, hmm, hmm. Turning circle radius of 910 meters, not quite the size of a continent, but it's getting pretty close. And a run shift time of 23.3 seconds, so decent, not great, not terrible, but decent maneuverability. Uh, concealment right now before any modules or captain skills have been applied 16.6 .6 kilometers of concealment base which mm, isn't great isn't terrible but considering her range her firing range is 16 point hold up a second so wait wait, wait. her concealment range is 0.1 kilometers more than her main battery firing range base Huh? That's... God, that's not going to come down a whole lot. I thought maybe they were going to have great concealment because of their firing range. And the idea was, you know, like, like the Roma, it has a short firing range, but it has amazing concealment. But no, they just straight up said, no, you're, you're going to be seen outside of your main battery firing range if you don't build into concealment. That is... I don't... I don't th no, there's not another, another ship in the game like that without putting some type of crazy build on it to get its concealment range above its main battery firing range. I wonder if that's a a, a glitch, like it's only supposed to be uh, 16.5, like the same as its firing range. I could kind of see that, but over its firing range, that's that's something. Again, I haven't seen anything about the ship from uh, YouTube or reading about it on on uh, the forums or anything from the testing results this is my genuine first impression so if that is a thing then all right then we'll, 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 we'll try and deal with that okay I'm gonna module her out and kit her out if I slap my Roma captain on here and then we will reconvene here in a moment all right welcome back so what I actually wound up doing is gonna Paulo Emilio captain because for this period the Lepanto is considered to be a special ship so you can move commanders around willy-nilly um, so I took him and spec'd out his battleship skills because he is a 19 point commander versus a 14 point commander that I have on my Roma. So I basically put what I would put on my Roma on here. So we went with preventive maintenance to, you know, of course, keep the turrets from being knocked out. Um, whoops, sorry guys, hit my mic. Uh, grease the gears because it's really the only two point skill that I think is um, viable for the Lepanto, although. If the consumable enhancements does apply to the exhaust smoke, um, that would be useful. But it, it says smoke generator doesn't say exhaust smoke. I may try that later, see if that does apply to the smoke gen to the exhaust smoke generator, because that might be useful. Uh, then adrenaline rush, of course, for the three point skill. Then we are of course using dead eye, um, because everyone's using. It. Although, considering what the consumable range might be, I might switch it over to the um, close quarters combat because that does give the boost to the main battery reload time uh, but we'll, we'll try out Deadeye first because it's what everyone's using right now uh, and then emergency repair expert for that extra heal and it is sad that you can't get an extra smoke generator consumable out of this unfortunately but again I want that extra heal and then concealment expert alright for the modules I went with pretty much a standard battleship module build so again Main arm is mod 1, keep the turrets from getting knocked out. Damage con mod 1, because fires suck. Aiming systems mod 1 to try and rein in that dispersion. Damage con 2, because fires still suck. Concealment, and then main battery mod 3 to get that reload time down. So now we do have um, 5 charges of the repair party, 3 charges of the exhaust smoke consumable, which, act, which is active for 45 seconds. 
and recharges in 180 seconds. And I went with the fighter. Um, and I know I could take the spotting aircraft and get more range, but supposedly the ship has garbage dispersion. They say that in the uh, dev blog, dev blog articles and stuff. Oh wait, of course I forgot to upgrade to the the second hull. So let's I keep forgetting about that. Okay, okay. So there we go. That explains a lot. Yeah, this is a tech line ship, and when you get the ship, you don't immediately get the next step up in the uh, hull and the. Uh, gunfire control system so let's double check that now so what this has done is this I believe it increased the hit points yes hit points now at 75,900 and it increased the AA um, yeah so it gave us more hit points more AA and a bit more maneuverability I'm assuming the rudder shift times a bit faster and the gunfire control system <clears throat> gave us another two no uh, 1.6 <laughs> kilometers of firing so now we have 18.1 so now we have tier 8 firing range all right so let's see what has happened now so now with the main battery guns they have a 32.6 second reload time much more uh workable reload time and a 28.7 second 180 time so despite putting the reload module on which does increase the turret traverse time we have still managed to get about a 1.3 second faster uh, uh, 180 time on the guns and of course a 18.1 kilometer firing range now well that sucks so when you get to the base Lepanto your firing range is shorter than your detection range that that that, that freaking sucks alright so uh, maneuverability we now have a 16.7 second rudder shift time that's much 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 better and again I haven't put flags on yet so we're still at a 29.5 knot top speed alright and concealment now that's much better. 13.4 kilometer concealment. That's what I'm talking about. So we have 13.4 kilometer concealment and a 18.1 um, kilometer main battery firing range. So that should be much more workable than before. Okay. And of course we have the uh, smoke generators too to where we can escape if need be. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and slap flags on her. And I will go ahead and see you guys in battle. Ah, there's another whale on the enemy team. <laughs> uh, no CV though, in a straight tier 9 game. Alright, but there's Apollo Emilio. Alright, so, let's see. Can we blow up this Neptune? Okay, that's not the worst dispersion I've ever seen. Um, so that was 8k, that's, that's pretty okay. Follow okay, 12k, that's yeah. That's pretty good. We only hit him with five shells too, so that's like what, a little over twenty-five hundred per shell. <laughs> Alaska is coming within range. All right, so let's see. The thing is, with like sap, you don't really want to aim for the armor belt because you want to. The idea is you got to pin the lightly armored spaces on the ships, like that. Okay. So that was what another twelve k hit. some pretty decent dispersion there and seven hits ooh man we just chunked the crap out of him I think that was almost a 20k hit if not a little bit more actually now we are still playing at mid-ish range because most of the enemy ships are alive yeah look at that let's do it again That hits his superstructure. It should be a pretty good hit. Yep, 9k there. Okay, man is on the edge of our detection range, so we still got it going, and this should get him. Yep. That's kill number dose. That's a Minnesota. You got lots of 28 millimeters of armor, which I can pin with SAP Minnesota. Come here. Okay, so so far the reload's actually not that bad. I mean, of course, it, it is only a 32 second reload with the build that I have on it. And we have a adrenaline rush going as well. What is the turret angle number three? It is kind of okay. So we're at 16 kilometers away, which is actually pretty close by high tier standards nowadays. Uh, 5k off of him there. Let me get a little bit more angled into him. Uh oh. 
versus DDs. Now, in cruiser caliber sap, this absolutely slaps DDs. Uh, Arkita Kazi is tearing him a new one. But because they reduce the maximum damage down to 10%, it's just like AP. So the, the munition that was introduced in order to do a lot of damage to DDs doesn't do a lot of damage to DDs when it comes from, from a battleship. And my cats want me to pet her right now too. One second, Yami. Let me sink these ships first, then I'll pet you. Let me try not to get sunk by... Uh, by the uh, Benham here. Oh, I meant to launch my spotter plane. Not pop fuel smoke. And I fired too, so this is a, a bad situation. Oh, I am getting closer to him, so that that is working. Now, unfortunately, I don't have enough time to turn around. And they have lost all interest in me. Interesting. I am going to get rushed by the Benham here. Watch this. Oh, Buffalo. Thank you so much for the radar. So he's right there. So let's keep our bow pointed toward him. Hello, secondaries. Don't mind me, Jean Bar. I'm just turning around. I had AP loaded because I thought I was going to get the, the Minnesota's broadside, but that's not going to happen. So let's just eat these out. Never mind. He's, go he's gone. Oh, thank God that Jean Bar didn't have reload booster active. I would have had a very bad day just then. Yeah, we're going to turn around. And go back to the Sean Bar. <laughs> oh boy. We should be able to make this turn. But if he does come out broadside. Come on, turret three. Hello. Oh no! I had sap queued up! Oh my god, so my front two turrets aren't loaded. Secondaries, please. Just start a fire or something. Okay, I am angled, so this should be... Uh, it is French AP. Come on. Turret 3. I trust in ye. Please hit. Oh my god, thank you. So I'm in an awkward situation. Oh, I need to get Bao on to where that Benham's at, because I'm sure he's got more twerps in the water. Bao on stone. Ah, uh, stop, 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 stop. Please no flood. Please no flood. Don't kill me. Please no flood. Shiza. All right, I'm dead. Okay, so we were on a pretty good tear there. Uh, if I didn't fumble the smoke generator when I did I could have used it to get out of that situation that's on me but really really solid performance out of the Lepanto almost 100,000 damage in my first game and at 2.4 million potential damage tanked um, and again if I had saved that smoke screen for when that Jean Bar I thought he was going to keep going forward but he didn't he turned around um, to, he turned around and came around that corner so um, if I had the smoke screen there I could have popped it and just left you know, and gone silent and gotten out of that situation. So, good performance from the ship. Three kills in the first game, including first blood. Um, <laughs> the secondary set one fire. So, off to a really strong s start for the Lepanto. Um, so, I'll just wait for this battle to be done and then we'll hop into the next one. Okay, uh, third on the team, not bad considering we did goof up there. Alright, let's keep going. Well, that's actually pretty darn good dispersion. He kept turning 
So... Ooh, nicked him with two for 8k. That's that sap. Come around the corner, Lepanto. Hey. I went for his upper belt and his nose armor, but uh, Dispersion said you're going to hit the belt. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Making use of that smoke generator. Although we can slap the Gorizia now. And since he's not in line of sight, we should have, uh, we should have, uh, Deadeye on this Gorizia. Is he AFK or is he just, like, what is this man doing? Uh, did, did the man disconnect or something? Like, dude is just chilling there. Oh, there's a Lepanto again. He's on fire now. Let's see if we can finish off the Lepanto. Uh, huh. Our team's not looking too hot, although with this flank... Oh no, the Grizzly's firing back. I guess he wasn't AFK. Man was really just chilling there, broadside on to... to us. Finish your turn, York. Ooh, this should finish off the York. Yep. God. I'll be with you in a moment, Musashi. Yeah, Garizios have woken up. Ooh. I'll ask him, Mike. Yep, there we go. Good, 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 good. Broadside sent up. Don't need all my shells. Okay, you can have one rock. Oh, Missouri. Somebody brought out their moneymaker. Ooh, lovely, lovely group there. Really tight. There we go. That's that high velocity AP. What's my consumer one range once I'm in smoke? Oh, we can YOLO! Gentlemen. I think I've just, I've just discovered how I'm going to play this ship. Because we have a 2 kilometer detection range now, which is basically assured detection. Which means we can just go straight at them. And they can't see us until we're 2 kilometers away. But it's only lasted 40 something seconds. Hello, boys. And Musashi just fired. Let's see how this goes. Talk about pulling the handbrake. Oh no, oh no, oh no. Oh, that is mega unfortunate. Poke at Citadel, thank you. Poke at Citadel again. Thank you. That's the Missouri. Mm, mm, mm. Ow, 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 ow. We're alright, we're alright, we're alright, we're alright, we're alright. We're alright. Corazzata nemica fondata. 
You know, if I didn't get torpedoed by my own teammate, this ah uh, would have been a much better run. 176,000 damage done, two kills. Um, yeah. Again, probably the best decision to not torpedo from behind your your uh, your friendlies. And unfortunately, we lost that one. But we did 176,000 damage in the process. Uh, two kills, yeah. Kitakazi that torched me is top, uh, top on the team too. That's funny. Um, so let's see. Most of that was sap, except for the citadels with the Musashi at the end. No, oh, actually, it's more AP because of the Musashi citadels. But yeah, about half and half. All right, that was lovely. All right, let's keep going. 2.2 million potential damage done as well. And poke. 20k, dang. Yeah, the Siegfried's coded in like 26 millimeters, I believed. And the upper belt's uh, 90, which the sap can pin. Hey, it's the Latorio. Actually, it's the, the Roma with a different name on it, but yeah. Good old bow tanking. So, he can't spot me right now. Oh, sh and I can't spot him either. Dang. Okay, hold up. Hi, Latorio. Dang. I mean, it's it's you know, the smoke generator. It's just working the same way like Apollo's works. Whereas if they aren't paying attention to the massive smoke screen charging at them, they don't expect the shells. I did catch him in a turn too, of course. I don't remember his torp reload time too. I'm hoping it's longer than whatever those last torpedoes showed up. Okay, full sap out on the Minsk. 6200. There we go, Nelson got him. Thank you, Lord Nelson. I'm on the edge of my range. There we go. Anchorage. Georgia killed the Anchorage. Anchorage killed the Cleveland. There's the Surrey. Unfortunately, I don't think we're going to be able to do much more damage for the match ends unless this Georgia, Ostagotland, and Lepanto are just like some wonder duo that can merc uh, the, the four ships that are attacking them right now. Nope, they killed the Ostagotland. Uh, 81,000 damage that match. Just a very short run out. Yeah. Yeah. Bit of a rollover for our team. Well, rollover from our team to the enemy team. Okay, so the Lepanto is surprisingly good, in my opinion. From what we've seen so far, at least. Um, and I heard a lot, a lot of negative things about this ship. Again, I didn't watch any reviews of it before uh, filming my own review or read much about it besides like what's on the dev blog and the changes being made to it. But, it's pretty good. It's, of course, not the best tier 9 BB, but it's pretty interesting. The smoke generator, the exhaust smoke generator, is pretty fun to use. I know they said it was more of a defensive and get out of a bad situation, consumable, but using it to sneak up on ships unsuspectedly, or even like charging the... um. Musashi and Missouri, who the Missouri's radar was down at that moment, apparently, um, to where they can't get a, a lock on you, and they have to blind fire the smoke. In which cases, with battleship guns, they probably won't hit you, or only like wing you with a shell or two, or sneak up on unsuspecting ships, kind of like with the um, the Torio, as we saw. Um, that's a pretty pretty darn good tool to have, as well as of course you can pop it, and you have plenty of time to turn around and get out of a bad situation as well. Now the sap, the sap is really good, especially against cruisers. You guys saw that all throughout the, uh, the gameplay section. Now, I do wish it did a bit more damage to DDs because it's it's sap. It's supposed to, but it only does 10% of its overall damage to, D to DDs. And you do have 12 guns, so we can get a full gun salvo off on the DDs. Yeah, it'll do a decent bit of damage, like we saw with the Minsk. But you know, I wish the ratio was somewhere around in like 20, 25, maybe 30% of its maximum damage instead of its full damage. I know at one point in testing, they did do full damage to 
enemy DDs. I can understand why that was removed because that was probably removing any DD that they came across. Uh, the accuracy of the guns, if you put Deadeye on it, it's completely workable at long to mid range. And once you get within your detection range, which is 13, uh, what, 13.7 kilometers, 13.4 kilometers with a concealment build on the Lepanto, at that range, you're going to hit what you're shooting at. Unless you get some really, really, really bad dispersion, which I didn't really experience too much in playing the ship, as you guys saw. Um, the armor is really nice really chunky um you know if you're used to german armor and you're used to you know angling trying to get them to shoot this plate right here and your belt right here uh you'll be pretty fine we saw that um of course with the musashi he was aiming for my upper belt and just going through it because musashi and 18.1 inch guns and again you still do have the uh turtle back armor back here to protect your citadel in close in situations so unlike the roma and the Victorio, who don't have that, you know, to where you can just get absolutely nuked on your side right here with the Lapanto. And I'm assuming the Colombo has the same armor layout as well. You have a really tough Citadel, and that's really, really, really nice. Um, AP is also really good when you can use it to smack broadside, because again, that high velocity AP hurts. Again, you will primarily be using SAP. I mean, you guys saw it worked plenty fine for me. And then when you're, you take those opportune moments to push in, catch some ships broadside, load AP, and slap the crap out of them. So overall, I'm pretty happy with the Lepanto. And this is a tech line ship too, guys. You don't have to throw money at the game like I did to get This will be a completely free ship to grind in a few months, or probably in a few weeks, depending upon how they do the event. Um, and if the Colombo is just this, but bigger, I'm pretty excited, actually. So, yeah. Now, of course, it does lack in range, and in the current meta, it can be difficult to use, but it worked perfectly fine in every single game. I was able to get in close and, do, and to do damage, and yeah, toward the end of some of the matches, you know, I lack the ability to reach out there and reach those ships, and I don't have the uh, spotter aircraft on. If I did probably would work just fine but again with cvs being cvs and aa being aa i do like to keep that fighter on the ship just in case you know you run across a cv and your aa which doesn't really mean a lot anymore you still have the fighter to fall back on and people say you know the fighter is very unreliable yes it is but when it works it works and when you need it you need it so overall pretty decent ship in my opinion, I mean, of course, I like the playstyle. It's close in. That's exactly what I love. Um, it probably is worth the grind. You know, I'll be playing it a lot over the rest of the week and the weekend. And I'll update you guys in a later video. But from the first impressions, darn good, solid ship. Haven't seen any major problems with it so far. But again, beyond, beside the range. But when you're playing it and when it's playstyle, using your smoke, hopping up, sneaking up on people, and blapping the crap out of them, slinging sap at cruisers, and... The, light, the more lighter armored sections of battleships, you'll do just fine in the Lepanto. So that's my first impression review of the ship. If you guys enjoyed, make sure to drop a like, leave a comment, and subscribe to the channel. We're on our way now to 25,000 subs, just past 22,600, uh, not that long ago. I cannot thank you guys enough for that. Hope you guys are having a wonderful Thursday, and hope to catch you guys in the next one.